Hey everybody, uh, Professor Reed here. Um, wanted to do this video on a overview of the satire essay, which uh, we will be writing uh, towards the end of the semester. I try to make all these videos across the board for uh, my classes. If I teach it, I teach at a few different schools. I'm sort of the king of the adjunct world uh, in terms of writing uh, professors, but um, I know that in all my schools, the papers are going to be due in the portfolio at the end of the semester. So just check Canvas for the actual due dates for the satire paper. Now what we're doing is we're writing sort of a, a parody of or a satire paper that mimics a college essay. So we're trying to basically use source material and we're trying to create uh, a caricature um, or a satire of certain type of political events or something going on in society. Now the theme of the class is conspiracy theories. Um, so what you'll want to do is try to sort of create your own conspiracy. This paper came out of a pretty amazing class I taught at Rowan University over in Glassboro, New Jersey, and I had some students over there. Uh, the class was actually themed around uh, global warming. However, it turned into discussions of um, – conspiracy theories and they had to actually write a paper that was about uh, they had to create their own conspiracy so the idea of this paper is uh a uh, playing off of a traditional essay that you would write in a 101 102 class and it's trying to have source material and try to basically bait the reader in to believing in the paper being sort of a legitimate paper. Now, most students, and you're going to see this in the example, which I put up on Canvas as well, are going to not really like uh, reveal their position in the satire piece or leave it up to the reader. And that's what we're going to also recommend as well. Also, one of the things, and we'll note this as we move forward and as we look at the essay, uh, for this paper, we're not going to need a works cited page. There's no need to have academic scholars per se. Uh, sorry, academic articles per se, because this is more of a parody piece that we're pulling off some source material. But the idea of this is that we're sort of trying to trick the reader momentarily into believing that this is an actual essay, and then we're using satire to sort of make a point home. Okay, so satire is the use of irony, exaggeration, ridicule to expose or criticize uh, people's um, vices. Stupidity is from the uh, definition I got from the internet. Um, but it's also trying to poke fun at, sort of mock uh, politics or something that's going on in the general society. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Now, if you're familiar with satire, maybe you've had a chance to read uh, Jonathan Swift. I know, I, I think I read that in high school down in uh, Hampton, Virginia, down at Bethel High School. I think I read Modest Proposal. Maybe it was at um, college, that sort of thing. Mark Twain uh, wrote a piece called Advice to Youth, which is actually a shorter piece that's about um, some recommendations he made to you know younger people, and they were both examples of satire. We'll talk about this difference between um, different types of satire in a minute, but um, Jonathan Swift's uh, piece, A Modest Proposal, addressed with a pretty uh, problematic situation of individuals in Ireland, and it basically – uh, was a satire piece that talked about eating children and other type of sort of fantastical points that he made in order to drive a, an issue home. And I would also say that in American literature, not that I'm an expert in literature, should be more of a writer, less of a literary expert, but I would say satire has a very specific place in sort of an American literature. Um, Twain uses some of that in Huckleberry Finn, and he makes some commentary about society that borders on, you know, like that definitely has elements of satire and irony to it. And then, um, you know, like we'll talk about some more contemporary examples of that as well. Some people would argue that we have a little bit too much satire in our society as well, which, you know, has its sort of a valid point to it. Okay. Other examples of satire are going to be another example is Mark Twain. We, I just mentioned that Huckleberry Finn. Uh, Catch-22 is a pretty famous uh, novel that maybe you read back in high school college it's going to be one of those novels that sort of anthologized it's going to be uh sort of standard for a lot of different uh classes that you, you maybe have taken and then there's a pretty famous one called a clockwork orange which actually turned into a um, stanley kubrick film 
uh, back in what was that the seventies, Clockwork Orange as a novel. Uh, I don't think I've ever read the novel. I've read bits and pieces of it, but I know that the movie by Kubrick is a pretty big statement on sort of the amount of violence that we experience in society. So remember, satire is going to be basically uh, an exaggeration or a parody that is making a statement about society across the board. And satire by nature is going to be typically poking fun at religious institutions. We'll look in a second that no matter what political sort of uh, place you, you on the political spectrum, there's going to be examples of satire that are out there that can be, you know, for lack of a better term, sort of conservative versus liberal, you know, not to say you got to fit into those molds, but there's can be some that are on both sides of that equation and they all ultimately sort of make fun of or poke fun at something for a point. Okay. The Onion is a website that a couple years ago, gosh, uh, it's been around for a while, but it used to actually, I want to say, be a, an actual physical paper um, that I want to say was based out of Madison, Wisconsin, but I could be wrong about that. The Onion is going to be a pretty notorious uh, satire piece that actually they do some pretty good stuff. Uh, um, and, and I know that when we've had live classes, I'm making this video when we're in the midst of, well, you know, COVID and we're in the midst of um, being on Zoom. But usually we would watch some bits from The Onion. They have some, a website and they also have a YouTube page and they make some pretty, pretty interesting, pretty good satire pieces on The Onion. A lot of students have, um, in our day and age haven't maybe heard of them. But if you could, you know, just to search the the onion and check that out to give you some examples of satire. Now, they're satiring sort of uh, mainstream news broadcast, um, and I would say that they have a pretty wide range of political views. I don't know that I necessarily lump them into any specific uh, political ideology. They sort of make fun of everything. Babylon B, on the other hand, is another is a is an example of a satire piece that I think comes from like a Christian conservative perspective um they have a twitter page and they're going to be examples of satire that are going to be you know for back of lack of a better term sort of on that conservative side okay so we're trying to look at the full range of satire uh you know you can make the argument that satire is used by both sides to sort of uh, mock things. A lot of the meme in the meme culture that we have is based out of sort of a satirical point of view as well Okay, and then you got satire in the in the pop culture. I just found some examples here of The Simpsons, which gosh has been around since back when um, Professor Reed was in high school. So maybe gives you a little bit of a perspective on my age. Uh, Family Guy is a newer one. I know uh, my kids um, weren't allowed to watch Family Guy because uh, when they were younger, because it had some pretty graphic situations and scenes. I want to say it's based off of Rhode Island, which is a place I lived for a little bit. So it's got some sort of like Providence, Rhode Island jokes to it. So both of those are going to be sort of statements on society uh, in a cartoon version. Music now also has a level of satire to it. Dead Kennedys were a big um, a punk band when I was younger, more you know, more like sort of underground. Um, their lead singer wrote some. Pretty uh, interesting parodies. I would definitely say they, they lean towards a more left perspective, but they did uh, notoriously mock like Jerry Brown, the the Democratic governor of California back in the '80s. So if you're familiar with like punk music, a lot of that can border on uh, satire as well. I know that like early punk with like the Sex Pistols, there was a little bit of satirical nature to them in terms of lyrics sort of making comments about society in a in a more whimsical type of way. Okay, so, you know, this is just trying to give you a full range of the different satire that's out there. And we also have it in, in movies, right? So, we you know, The Simpsons has a movie. But uh, these are some that are a little bit newer movies that are out there, some a little bit older. Most everybody in my, in my classes is familiar with Borat. That's going to be uh, Sasha Ben Cohen, and he makes multiple movies. That um, he has the dictator, which is another movie, and I want to say they just came out with a Borat too. Now, some people have said, um, you know, uh, uh, Sasha Ben Cohen's Borat character is um, sort of a parody of a of of a certain person from a certain country. I want to say it's one of the stands. I know that that's going to be 
um, sort of the focus of the movie. I haven't seen that movie in a while, but typically in a literary class, we, this is going to be one of the, the papers that we, uh, we, we, we have to analyze a satirical piece, and Borat is going to be one that a lot of students will do. And some of the, the commentary and the scenes in Borat are pretty controversial. So there's been some discussions recently about, um, you know, like like Sasha Ben Cohen's relationship to it, what he's trying to do, what he's trying to achieve. South Park made a movie, if you're familiar with South Park. Now, I've had friends in my life uh, that have been huge South Park fans, um, and they really uh, – see them as pretty genius oriented i was never really that big into south park but that would be a pretty good example of satire office space is it going to be a movie gosh i don't know what year that exactly was made but it sort of plays and uh, pokes fun at uh, sort of a work environment and you could also i mean i would say the office is maybe something that we should have in here as well not necessarily a movie but it's going to be one of those TV shows that really parodies and satires an office type of environment. And a lot of people, a lot of students as well, are big fans of The Office. Okay, Dr. Strangelove is another Kubrick movie, um, as is Clockwork Orange. Have you ever seen Dr. Strangelove? It's about sort of Cold War, um, 1950s, 60s, uh, nuclear um, bomb sort of fears. It's actually, I think, pretty good in terms of a movie. I watched it recently, and I thought, you know what, it makes some pretty good statements there. Tropic Thunder is a pretty good one as well, which makes fun of sort of um, Vietnam-style movies. So a lot of these parodies are going to uh, basically like play off of a, a genre, so they'll – sort of use the framework for a certain type of movie and then make it into a satire piece like the onion does with a, um, a sort of traditional news story. Okay. So satire is going to mimic, uh, in a lot of ways, something you're familiar with to sort of try to draw you in to the discussion. Sorry to bother you. I've had a few students, um, uh, that deals with race discussions as well. Unfortunately, I haven't seen that one, but I've had a lot of papers on it. The Dictator is uh, – The Great Dictator is going to be a Charlie Chaplin movie, which I think parodied uh, some of the fascist regime, regimes back in the 1930s. So this is a pretty wide range of different films out there that would fit this idea of satire. Truman Show, uh, I want to I say parodies, uh, like a reality TV show. And one that a lot of people are big fans of is Idiocracy. Once again, a movie I haven't seen, but it's sort of about the downfall of society. And a lot of people have said – Idiocracy sort of predicts a lot of things that are going on in America right now. Okay. Um, yeah, great. Robocop's on there. I guess Robocop's a form of a parody as well. Um, not much humor to it, but one of the common themes you'll see in satire is going to be a level of humor to them. Are you good? Now, some of the, the terms you, and, and some of the things you can sort of think about as you write the paper. Uh, the paper is sort of shorter. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, ridicule is, you know, trying to make fun of making making fun of something, trying to make it absurd. Now, in my classes that are dealing with conspiracy theories, one of the things you're going to try to do is you want to try to add in an element of conspiracy in there, sort of make it like the point of the paper is write a parody uh, essay of a college essay that has got a little bit of ridicule, a little bit of satire to it, some sarcasm. Okay, and if you ever know people that are sarcastic. Um, sometimes that can be uh, a badge of honor for certain people. Irony, you know, if you, if you think about like literature, it's got situational irony or ironies that the audience is aware of, that the, that the actual characters aren't aware of. That's a big one from like a Greek tragedy. You can exaggerate something or you can make it sort of an overstatement or you can sort of downplay it as well. And a juxtaposition is when you compare two things and how they're similar and how they're different. Okay, so all these are sort of terms you can think about when you write a paper on – well, basically for this one, it's more of a creative exercise. We're writing a paper on – that mimics a research paper. Um, you can use these sort of ideas uh, as you write that paper and sort of think about these if you if you like want to do like a little bit of a review of what satire is. Okay, and then we have parody. Uh, incredulity, and then we have diminutive. These are all going to make, you know, sort of making targets of something 
to sort of downplay them and also to sort of highlight things about them. Now, a lot of people would say that when they make satire, the goal of the satire piece is to try to bring light to something, um, you know, like uh, very famously in music and different types of cultural uh, expressions. A lot of people have said, oh, this is sort of like satire, right? Like, um, you know, like there's all sorts of things I can think of. Back in the 90s, um, there was an artist named Marilyn Manson who's uh, recently made the news a lot. But Marilyn Manson was this uh, sort of shock rocker. I was never really a fan of Marilyn Manson's, but he was trying to make um, music that was real critical of society and sort of a satire of society on a lot of levels. And a lot of people, though, blamed his satire for being um, sort of an impetus for um, – individuals committing certain types of crimes and that sort of thing like the columbine shooters were were um were there Marilyn manson came under a lot of scrutiny when the columbine shootings happened back in the 90s so he would sort of argue that it's a little bit of satire to what he's doing so the balancing act of what you're trying to do with satire uh, across the board is complicated as i mentioned borat a lot of people have said uh, maybe some of the ideas in that are creating, you know, like some some level of quote unquote hate towards other people. Other people are saying, well, this sort of calls everything into light and gives us a sort of a platform for discussing our belief systems in place. Okay. All right, good. Now, there, there's two types of satire we're going to talk about. One's called Horatian satire, um, which is going to be named after Horace, and it's going to be a type of satire that's going to be more sympathetic, more gentle. And it sort of aims at just poking a little bit of fun. The the essays we're going to try to write should be somewhere in between these. Um, the next type of satire is going to be juvenilian satire. It's going to be one. It's going to be satire that is a little bit more explicit towards making fun of something. So uh, if you've ever spent a little bit of time looking at satire pieces, you're going to see that they get sort of lumped into two different. Um, schools of thought, one being more extreme and then the other one being a little bit lighter. For example, I would say Jonathan Swift's uh, essay on Ma's Proposal where it's talking about eating kids and it's going to be you know, trying to make this point there. That would be this juvenilian satire as well. So sort of keep that in mind. Like with, with the – look at the example. Read it over. Uh, keep this essay pretty simple. I hope this is a little bit of a funner essay to write. Sort of a nice ending as we get towards the end of the semester of something you can do, and I'll talk about that in a second. But you know, like like you're basically trying to uh, use source material in a way that is satirical, and it drives your point home. And I think the 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 good thing about this essay is that I'm gonna get a sip of water here. Is that it sort of makes us aware of like the way source material can be used in a paper. I get it. so here's a satire essay. It's an, it's going to be a parody of a of a standard college essay, argumentative essay. We don't one of the things just to note: no need for a works cited paper um, at the end, or no types of uh, anti bibliography. And then what you're going to want to do is try to basically satirize a political or social theme, and you're going to try to write it for three pages, and you're going to see that you're going to try to make it into sort of conspiratorial. Okay. One of the you know options that you have for the paper is um, you know you can also play off of one of those um, conspiracies to look at as you write your other essays in the class. It's up to you. And then uh, one of the elements of the paper you're going to have to have is a counter argument and a rebuttal. So um, I will show you an example of that. And then yeah, try to have a little bit of fun with this essay. It's a little bit more lighthearted. It should be a nice sort of ending to um, the semester, and uh, hopefully, it, if you did take, if you do take a 102 class, maybe that's something you can sort of pull off of as well. Because I know in my 102 classes, we talk about satire pieces a little bit more in depth. You're going to need three outside sources, and then one of the ones I'm going to recommend is something called the Pew Research Center. And you can see here, Pew Research. If you put in that website from the last. Um, slide you can also just type into google pew research center it's going to be a polling um website that has multiple uh i guess subheaders to it or little buckets to it it looks at religion social trends media u.s politics so what you're going to want to do is 
use uh, some of the sources that are out there that have been proven to be sort of true or valid and try to add them into the paper and then expand on them in this sort of satirical, sarcasm, exaggerated kind of way. Okay, and so the, the goal of this is adding in source material. Pew is a pretty good example of like some pretty, um, how can I say this, sort of like bigger ideas in society. Like I teach a journalism class I have before in the past, and if you put Pew in a Pew source into a journalism story, it's usually going to be pretty agreed upon that it's sort of neutral. Okay, so um, we so so you with the paper, you don't want to find a source that's satirical in nature like you wouldn't want to use a source from the onion for example um in it because you're trying to find some sources that are pretty agreed upon to be true okay all right good now for this paper you're going to want to have a thesis statement to it where you have your point of view um we'll talk about that in a second but it, it is a very similar parody to you know it's a parody of a research paper well you know like a like an argumentative paper and it's going to be backed up and supported with ideas. So you want to have a thesis statement that um, argues a position because one of the things you're going to have to have in the paper is a counter-argument. And the counter-argument goes against your thesis statement, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. So on Canvas, you're going to see an example of a paper that was from uh, fall of 2020, and the student wrote it about COVID, about some of the um, – it took some sources from about COVID and made it into a parody paper about that. So I can remember this specific student actually wrote his essays on um, the uh, his research paper and his uh, paper on the cause and effect essay. He actually wrote that on COVID across the board. So the theme of COVID and sort of the conspiracies around it were uh, part of all of his papers. So that was actually a pretty interesting thing to do. Now, that being said, for my classes that are writing other papers about conspiracies, you do not have to write this paper about the same uh, conspiracy that you wrote in the first two essays. You don't have to do that. You can sort of mix this up. And sometimes students will thematically write all their papers sort of in the same area. Okay, But for this paper, specifically, you want to have a thesis statement that argues a position. Okay, and you can see here, this is up on Canvas as well. Um, he actually called the essay COVID as self care. Oh, so, sorry, COVID as self care, which is going to be a buzz term that was sort of used there for a while. And you can see here that he used a source from theobserver.com of um, the amount of profitability that was made. Um, by certain companies. He started talking about that. He basically says in his thesis statement, and he uses an I for this, which is for this one, it, because this does have sort of an editorial feel, I'm, I'm okay with using an I. I am arguing that COVID-19 was a business plot meant to dominate your wallet and ultimately your very soul. So you can see there he's arguing a position. It's exaggerated, um, and the student is making sort of a statement about the uh, financial – profitability of covid and it is a you know pretty good example of a satire piece so if you've ever taken a journalism class and write an editorial piece it's definitely got some elements to that to that element to the editorial type of writing as well but the thing is the student here was pretty explicit about the thesis statement that they were writing and you can see here that uh here's another example of a body paragraph that the student uh, added in and you can see here they used two different sources that talked about the amount of money that COVID ended up creating for um, Amazon and Walmart and he talked about how uh, basically the idea is that if you read the essay the idea is that uh, sort of like Amazon and Walmart had a hand in sort of COVID in some of the discussions about it in order to make money and he sort of makes a parody of it okay so you know like the student didn't, you know, he's not from from his first essays. He wasn't a believer in, you know, the idea that COVID was some sort of conspiracy unleashed on the world. But he makes some pretty interesting points about the amount of money made off of COVID, and he does it in a parody type of way that uses sources and sort of tries to trick the reader into believing, you know, a little bit of what he's saying. So if you read this essay. 
you're you're not going to really get to feel that he doesn't necessarily not believe it but he's sort of playing with that as he writes it okay and he, and he mentioned there um jeff bezos big wallet um and you know he actually has a curse word in it which i think is okay for this essay as well but you know basically what he's trying to do is use the source material and sort of expand on them in an exaggerated way okay all right good now the next you know part of the essay is going to be um, using something called a, a counter argument. You're probably pretty familiar with this, and you know you can sort of think about it as being a type of paragraph. And, and in this example, uh, for this essay, he actually makes it into one paragraph where he has counter argument and he has rebuttal, and he and he has those sort of wedged into a single paragraph. And one of the things you want to keep in mind is um, this paper happens towards the end of the semester. It's doing the portfolio. So one of the things that we want to make sure that we do is we want to be very explicit about the the counter argument. We want to make sure that the reader knows we're going into that. And you can use these phrases to basically introduce the counter argument. And sort of think about it like if you told this to somebody, what would be their objection to it? And the counter argument is trying to be neutral about that objection. So if you think about eat those, pay this in logos, something that you know maybe we should satire as well um that's another story but uh that idea from aristotle um in a counter argument rebuttal pair paper or element to the paper you want to make sure you have that in there because it gives you a chance to talk a little bit about the other side now what i'm going to recommend for the paper is that you sort of just plug um your ideas into this and you use these as the introductory phrase or the topic sentence for that specific paragraph and you can see here um, that the next thing you want to do is a, something called a rebuttal. Where, and the rebuttal basically um, returns to your original position and it negates the counter argument. So you want to keep these uh, pretty separate. You can make them into two different paragraphs. You can see the writer did a really good job of blending them into one single paragraph. I know if you write a bigger research paper, because this paper is only like three pages long. Um, you you could definitely expand this into um, you know multiple paragraphs of the paper and this counter argument rebuttal paragraph typically happens at the end of the paper and it, the rebuttal paragraph um, as in you'll see in this paper it actually serves as a form of the conclusion okay so counter argument use those phrases rebuttal they've got some phrases that you want to use as well but counter argument describes the objection and then rebuttal um goes into um basically the returns back to your thesis statement so i would say this in the counter argument position it's going to be sort of like the only part of the paper that isn't sort of satirical and you can see here there's some phrases you may want to pause the video and look at these um what this argument overlooks and then you you know you you, you put that in there and that's going to indicate to the reader and me as the grader that we're going into a paragraph that is uh, returning to and therefore negating the counter argument. Okay, so just think of this sort of as a discussion. You're going from um, this idea of an objection back to your original point. And you can see here that the student did a pretty good job. Okay, uh, uh, and I put these in bold just so you can sort of see that. Uh, now some people may argue that big business is actually uh, was actually hurt by the pandemic. And then he paraphrases an article that talks about the, you know, the blow that the major corporations have take, took, took from the pandemic. He looks at um, Disney, uh, major sporting events definitely got impacted by that as well. And then he goes into the rebuttal, but what this argument overlooks, that's going to be that introductory phrase that indicates we're going into rebuttal. And he talks about um, sort of like the way the NFL is going to cash in on the vaccinations and it's going to have a well, basically a, it looks like a football team that's going to be um anti-vaxxers now i think and i did have a discussion about this we do meet for one last time with conferences and talk about this i know the student said basically um he felt that this is sort of using wwf like the old hulk hogan uh rowdy Roddy piper um Who's another example of a wrestler? Or Randy the Macho Man Savage, right? Like so, so basically he's taking this sort of idea of like the wrestling, like not real – like professional wrestling, and he's putting that into and applying it to um, discussions about 
uh, football teams and they're going to make a team called the Ben Salem, a local nod, anti-vaxxer group there. And they're going to sort of be the bad guys of the of the uh, NFL. Okay, And then he goes in and he takes this sort of a jab at Carson Wentz. So, you know, this – this essay happened in 2020 when Wentz – I can't remember when Wentz was traded, but it was at a time period where there, I think Wentz was, was benched. I know he was benched at the time. So anyway, he sort of takes a jab at um, the Eagles, the 2020 Eagles season, and he, and he takes a look at Prime, and he talks about that. And I can remember this student was – we talked about this during the uh, his conference. He also was saying that it's sort of interesting that – um, well, he had this sort of theory on the Las Vegas Raiders now being this team that's sort of like, um, well, it's newer this year. Well, they played in 2020, but the idea is that they're sort of a gambling team, and there a lot of people have argued they're the first team that's sort of international, and in, in the sense that it's it's a team that, that the location doesn't really as matter as much, so. He sort of pulled this off of that. Anyway, it was pretty interesting the way he sort of envisioned this, and he did a really good job of sort of writing this out. So um, the the whole essay is up on uh, on on Canvas. Take a look at that. But the key components are is a it's a satire piece. You're trying to get three sources in there, um, at least three sources, and you're trying to sort of mock or make fun of the college essay that we would typically write and you're trying to bait the reader into believing that it's true and you want to try to create some level of conspiracy in it. It's an exercise to understand the way people can use source material, make it sort of conspiratorial. Um, and remember, like all the essays, I try to be as neutral as possible about them so you can write one that's more this side of the political spectrum. The other side, it doesn't matter to me as long as it's done pretty good. And you can see here that the writer of this essay actually never really revealed what they thought about the actual conspiracy. They never did that. And, it, and sort of the way that Jonathan Swift did in Modest Proposal. So we are, you know, satire can be something that's a little bit controversial, but we are playing with some pretty established literary traditions of that matter. Or not like we're 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 in that space. So have some fun with this. Keep it sort of simple. And um, one of the things you got to have in there is counter argument, which goes against your position. And you're going to explain that sort of neutral. Use a source for that. And then you want to use these, you know, the phrases from the PowerPoint a little bit earlier to let us know that you are going into counter argument. You're going into rebuttal, and then that should be the conclusion for it. And then. You do not need a work cited page. Just make sure you put where the source came from in here, because I think, you know, one of the one of the the big issues is plagiarism. But for this essay, we're actually using sources sort of against themselves. So I don't know that there's any way, reason to really heavily document it. But if you can put in um, the source, just sort of tell where it came from, then you should be pretty good with this. And then, yeah, ultimately have a little bit of fun with it. Check out some of them satire pieces. I always find that students are big fans of satire. Like we we get a little carried away sometimes in class talking about you know different movies we've seen and that sort of thing. Um, and then you know that's it. So um, take a look at Canvas for the due dates. Um, there'll be the Dropbox in there, um, and then just note that the final version of this will be due in the portfolio at the end of the semester. Okay, have a great day.